Hi, everybody. We're back to daily office. It's the end of Easter tide. We're basically combining last week and this week, because in both of these weeks, we're reading the book of Ephesians together. And I just love this book. In fact, I love the book so much that in the summer after my junior year in college, I actually memorized the thing. I know that sounds crazy, but it's just so rich. Uh, I love how Paul uses lofty language and just the most rich imagery to address very practical problems. He's basically dealing with how easy it is for Christians to blend into the social surroundings. And Paul wrote this book to Christians in and around the city of Ephesus, which was a major hub uh, in the ancient Roman Empire, and he's trying to make a persuasive case why these Christians and we Christians can't allow ourselves to blend into our social surrounding. This is because God's sovereign work to save us leads us instead to shine with truth and love in the midst of a very often darkened world. Now, Paul knew that these Ephesian Christians were not yet as skilled as they need to be in the art of discernment. Discernment is the ability to tell a counterfeit from the genuine article, to choose a path of faithfulness in a very complex, often chaotic and confusing world, right? And so, Paul, in his farewell address to the Ephesians, when he left that city in the book of Acts, to Acts chapter 20, he urged them to vigilance, all right? And now years later, in this letter that he's writing to them, um, Paul is emphasizing the need to speak the truth. That's in Ephesians chapter 4. Speak the truth. That is how you build the church, both then and now, because in, these, in our age, these same issues challenge us mightily. Our society is awash in ideas and imagery and mythology and ideologies that seek to capture the imagination, that seek to uh, control the allegiance of the masses. Sometimes these ideas explicitly rival our faith in Jesus. And more often, they are subtly subversive to it. That's the thing about counterfeits, right? It's hard to tell the difference. And the message makers and the image shapers of our society, I mean, think of how well they've honed the tools of propaganda into weapons of mass deception. I think that if Christians are to keep a steady course in the gale force winds of doctrine, as Paul calls them, we just can't accept at face value the easy soundbite answers of the conventional wisdom. Now, Paul helped those Ephesian Christians to see uh, how to do that. And he basically is describing how we as Christians march to the beat of a different drummer than the pagans in the society around us. We live a different narrative. We have a deeper source of identity and allegiance. And therefore, Christians have to learn to rigorously seek the truth together and to winsomely and courageously speak the truth in love to one another and to others who seek an anchor in a world that, well, I mean, it's tossed by storms of different ideas and deception and chaos. But Paul is careful to emphasize that truth by itself ain't enough, right? And that's a very important reminder for us today. And so Paul pleads with us. He literally begs us in chapter four to lead a life worthy of the calling that we had been called with in all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. He says, every effort because the church only works when each part is working properly and promoting the body's growth, building itself up in love. So truth and love are both 
of non-negotiable importance. So that's the introduction to the book of Ephesians. Uh, stay tuned and I'll make another video that does a quick overview of the chapter by chapter. So I'll see you in a, another video coming up in the next day or so. Thanks. God bless you all. Bye.